my name's John Groshans. I work with the Flaw Park Police. School safety is, is a pet peeve of mine. I, I look at what's going on around. I get a call from a lot of schools. I have to tell you, it, it's very interesting that the phone call, I don't want anyone to know I'm calling, but what do I do? What do you do where? One of my daughter's friends just got hired at a school district. She goes, I don't know what to do if the fire alarm gets pulled. This should be part of basic training in August when you start. What do you do if the fire, is everyone here working in elementary school, or middle school, or high school? What do you work? And, and that's fine. This is going to focus mostly on schools because, and I'm going to tell everyone right here, you're going to get these trainings in. And they're going to tell you an office building, a synagogue, a church, and a school is all the same thing. No, they're not. They're nowhere near the same things. Securing a school is completely different than securing an office building. Run, hide, fight is not a school-based safety plan. It's not made for schools. We have our tools. Let's just use them. Some of the things in my own school, we've been in lockdowns during a drill where it's been announced so they know we're going to do it, and the teacher is still teaching class as it's going on. That should never happen. These are very important drills to do, and I'll show you why. Lockdowns work when they're called right. My problem is uh, I had a school district where the superintendent was the only one who called a lockdown. That, that's bad policy. What if he's not there? What if she's not there? What if, it's a, what if it's a district with 18 buildings? No way. Absolutely not. So you ask me who should be able to call a lockdown? Well, I'll take you to a school in Idaho where the custodian is bringing out garbage to a dumpster, and he turns around and he sees a kid that he knows doesn't belong on campus. And that kid gets out of the car and racks a shotgun. And he calls a lockdown over his radio. The school goes in lockdown. The kid never gets into the building. That custodian's a hero. But also the fact that that school district was smart in saying any employee can call a lockdown. In some of our buildings, only the principal or assistant principal. So if you're standing by your classroom, you see something outside, you don't have to call to get permission to call. That's ridiculous. Call a lock. So if you call it and it's not a lockdown, come out of it. They just had a school where the boiler blew up. They called a lockdown right away. And then you come out of it. We, now we know what that loud noise is. One of the first problems we have is denial. One, if you go to any active shooter, active threat event, I hate the term active shooter, especially with schools, you're going to find that their first reaction was, that's not gunshots. That's something else. And, and, and Parkland, that happened there also. Santa Fe, that happened, that, that denial, that this isn't really happening. So right off the bat, where's Matt? Oh, all right, you're lucky. I have a lot of programs. We're going to go through the terminology, the drills, what works, what doesn't, what we're doing right, what needs to be improved, what an active threat, not active shooter, it's active threat, and uh, growing trends in safety. Some are good, some are not so good. Right here in our school, I am a, a safety advocate. I, I really believe in securing our school, sticking by the rules. One of the rules is, you don't have business in my school, don't come here. You're not getting in. The young man on the left... Yesterday was arrested for murder. That young man was in Fall Park Memorial High School during the Thanksgiving break to come and shake hands and meet all the teachers again. My question is, why was he allowed in the building? He had no business there. You let a murder into your building during a school day, and you did it willingly. There's a reason you have to have business before you come into our schools. You know, I had a dad tell me when we started really hardening the school, it's like a jail. No, it's not. It's nothing like a jail. Yeah, you have to show ID. You got to get buzzed in a couple times. That's not a jail. He goes, well, you know what? This is ridiculous. He said, I said, no, it's a jail. It's not a Walmart either. People from the streets shouldn't have access. Upstairs is Nicole from the DA's office. She runs an ambassador group with, with teens. And they asked me to come to the school safety one. One girl told me her school is wide open all day long. All day long, every door is open. It's not going to happen here. That's a bad policy to have. Somebody should be stepping on this. So you teachers... You are local parent. You're in place of a parent. So when you talk about an office building in a church, those people have no responsibility for everybody else. You protect yourself, and then you can help people. Because if you can't protect yourself, if you don't protect yourself first, you're not going to help anyone. In a school, you're replacing a parent. There's a lot more responsibility on you. This is a training they did in the Riverhead schools. This is a civilian response to active. Our kids aren't civilians. They're students. This training is very good for office buildings. This training is very, our guys are trained in this. I would never bring it into my schools. This isn't what educators should be seeing. This has nothing to do with securing a school. Office buildings, malls, fantastic. Churches, great. Not schools. Active threat. Active shooter is a bad term. We've had so many incidents of other types of things going on, but when we talk to educators and we say active shooter, everyone's looking for the gunshots. If there's no gunshots, we're not going to lock down. There's, there is no never and there is no always. What should I do all the time? What common sense would tell you to do. 
You're going to have to have a, an ability to think on your feet. The, these situations unravel kind of quick. So when we tell the teachers, when you hear lockdown to sweep the hallway, you don't always sweep the hallway. If you hear gunshots outside your door, you lock that door, you lock down. But there's kids in the hallway. I get it. It's a horrible decision to make. You stepping into that hallway isn't going to help anybody. You just put your classroom at risk, and you put yourself at risk. Thanks, Matt. Don't make it complicated. Listen, you got two choices. I see these, these booklets. Some guy showed me a booklet of 96 different options of what they can do. So now you got a sub there. Something happens. She's going to have to flip through. I don't know. No. Are you staying in this? Are you going? What are you doing? And if you're going, you make that decision to go, go. Don't look back. Don't second guess it and go. This is um, denial. This was a, a, a um, a loud bang, and the school goes into lockdown. This was the boiler. This is a parent from Columbine, and Columbine is where the police got it all wrong. There are steps that we learned as we moved on. Columbine was step one when we realized how bad our policies were with this. Columbine is where we all waited out front and waited for emergency service and SWAT. In Nassau County, your emergency service, they're great, fantastic guys. Average response time is going to be between 20 and 40 minutes. They're not going to be here when all this is going on. They're going to be here when all this is over. So the, the mother said, when 500 officers go into a battle zone, not one comes away with a scratch and something is wrong. I expect dead and crippled officers, not just students and teachers. This is a person in pain. This is a person watching her kids get slaughtered while the cops were standing outside. She's right. We should have done something different. And we did. We changed. Right after that, we changed our protocols. We changed what we do. Five-year data. This is an actual report, not the one that came out from, from that, that homeland place. The 80% of them were connected to the facilities that were attacked, for schools, elementary schools, attacked by people who are unrelated to the school, but your high schools. 100% were attacked by people that had something to do with that school. If you work in a middle school that's connected to a high school, that's a big stat. That's somebody in our building coming in. Very hard to defend against a student who wants to harm our kids. All the protocols we put in place from ID cards to locking the doors to identification, they're in already. They're all single attackers from 2000 to 2015, 90% overall, 10% where there's two attackers. The interesting thing, anybody here is an administrator or a teacher, never in the history of active threat, active shooter, have they ever separated. So this whole thing, they're in the hallway, I have no place to go, I'm on the first floor, I'm not going to go outside because there's going to be another shooter out there. That's not what the stats are telling us. The stats are telling us if you need to go, you go. When there's more than one shooter, they stay together. Could that change? This could all change tomorrow and we'll change our protocols. But right now, those shooters stay together. Every single school shooting, school threat, is a pre-planned attack. This is never anybody who decided the last minute that they're going to exact revenge on someone. There is a thought process that starts. So when you hear about a school district like Franklin Square who puts their security guard with a gun at the front desk every single day and you're going to plan an attack, your first part of the plan is going to be to take out that security guard. Now what do you have? You have his gun also or her gun also. 17 from 20 guns come from the home in active shooters in schools. So when you hear about these gun laws and we're going to tighten them up, it doesn't mean that you can't get them from another family member. It also doesn't mean you can't get them from the dark web. You can go to the dark web right now and buy whatever gun you want. They'll mail it to you in pieces and show you how to put it together. Banning goods, I, guns, I get it. As far as for school safety, anyone who wants a gun can always get their hand on a gun. This is the report that came out from Center for Homeland Defense. And it came out with ridiculously high numbers. The numbers were extraordinarily high. But you have to read the whole report. Because the project says, any K through 12 building. And then they said, any instant a gun is brandished, fired, or a bullet hits school property. Well, wait a second. If you're on a campus with 18 acres, and, and, and their, sh their shop gets hit with a bullet, that's not an active shooter, active threat event. That's not somebody in here actively trying to kill our kids. Then it went on to say that any, regardless of reason, number of victims, time of day or day of week. Shooting someone on a track at 11 o'clock on a Friday night is not an event, a school-based event. And this is some of the things that they, they counted. A 12-year-old female student accidentally fires a real gun thinking it was fake. Yep, horrific, the gun shouldn't be in there. This is not an active shooter, active threat event. This is no one actively trying to kill people in our school. One student killed another critically wounded after an accidental shooting. 
Yes, tragic. Yes, somebody lost their life. Again, not an active shooter, active threat event that they counted as part of their totals. A man was shot and wounded in the stomach in the parking lot of a school. This isn't an active shooter, active threat event. This isn't somebody in our schools opening fire on our kids. Those numbers were ridiculous. These are the school shootings. These are the, the, the events that took place that, that made everything what it is right now and why we're doing this today. Columbine, Sandy Hook, Parkland, and Santa Fe. There's other ones in there too, and we're gonna get into them. I'm gonna show you how our policies change with each one, how we learn from each one to get better and better at this. Beslin, Russia was absolutely by far, you talk about the school shootings, the school shootings, this is the one. 334 people lost their life on this. Anyone familiar with this? The first day at school at Russia is a national day of, of how it's a holiday. Everyone's off from school, and they parade the kids into school from the youngest to the oldest. What they didn't know was a white van pulled up full of terrorists that took over the gymnasium. So when they got to about the fourth grade, they locked the doors and they wired everything with bombs. And they systematically just killed everybody who was in that school that day. <clears throat> These are the knife attacks. I'm not going to go through every one. When we say active shooter and we train educators and teachers and staff to look out for active shooters, you're not going to hear any noise here. There's not going to be that sound of gunshots in the hallway. And just for a point of fact, anyone who's ever been through active shooter training, if they've ever fired a round in your school building, it's very difficult to tell where it came from. I don't know if you guys ever went through to a building in a school where they fired a blank. You have no idea what direction that round came from. Two knives standing at Pennsylvania school, 22 people were injured, brandaged two large knives. Again, active threat, not active shooter. This is the Chinese middle school. This is outside the middle school. But again, and I put this in here because it's the, the students were being dismissed. Arrival and dismissal are our most dangerous times at school. In Floral Park, we have a mock police car in front of every one of our schools at arrival and dismissal. We have it there in case something happens. Somebody will pass a school bus. Hey, he passed the school bus. That's not what I'm here for. That is not my, right now, that's not what I'm doing. Right now, if somebody's thinking about doing something, hopefully they'll go somewhere else. Or if somebody does something, we're right here. We're, we're ready. Dispute out a boy, little uh, fatal stabbing in Michigan school. Somebody on social media may have seen this and could have prevented this had they told someone. That's going to be over and over for the next 45 minutes. These were all tipped online. Everyone told us exactly what they were going to do, and no one did anything about it. They're going to tell you with, with other people, like Adam Lanza, the police were called multiple times. They were. Your hands are tied. You're allowed to watch World War II movies. You're allowed to blacken your windows. The police can't do anything. Did we fail? Yes, look what he did. The problem is we need more authority when we start getting all these reports on someone who's that mentally ill, and we don't have the authority to take them into custody yet. In New York State, they have to be an active threat to themselves or someone else before we can physically take them in handcuff them and take them to the hospital. This just happened. Girls armed with knives plotted an attack at the Florida middle, middle School. They asked why the girls have, they were going to kill girls and plotting to attack and kill as many students as they could. That's that planning. They pre-planned this, but another girl saw it online, reported it to the police, and they got them coming out of the bathrooms with their knives and with their hit list. Nobody would have heard any shots here. It wasn't going to happen. This is a college, this was Lone Star College. As this is unfolding, this guy used basically a scalpel to run through the, the uh, hallways and slash people throat. It took a long time for them to lock down. As you look at the story, he went building to building. How do you go building to building if everything's locked? Because no one called a lockdown, no one called a lockout. No one knew what was going on yet. All of them should have been lockdowns and none of them involved a, a firearm. There were no noise in any of this. There was screaming and bleeding, but no noise. That's a lockdown. You walk out your school classroom, somebody's holding their neck and they're bleeding. That's a lockdown. Lock it down. We'll see what's going on later. Is more police in schools the answer? Well, let's make sure that these cops are trained to work with kids. Let's make sure that the people we're about to put in, I, I got news for you. I don't know if you know this, 7th through 12th grade are wise guys. But you better have the temperament to work with these kids. Don't make this a detail. Hey, John, you know what? You've been doing this 31 years. This is a great gig, man. This is Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Oh, I'll do that. No, no, it doesn't work like that. The school should have a process in place where they're going to interview these cops coming into their schools. The schools should also have the right to say, you know what? This isn't working out. We need somebody new. This is not going the way we thought. He was a good guy when we entered. Hey, John was a great guy. Now he turned into an idiot. We need to get rid of him. He's nasty to the kids, he's nasty to the parents. 
This, this school resource officer thought it would be funny to, she didn't tase this kid, she arced the taser. But the kid was sleeping in class. They called the school resource officer. A student sleeping in class is not a school resource officer responsibility. The answer should have been, not my job. You have social workers, you have teachers, you have principals, you have assistant principals. That's their job. She thought it'd be funny. She arced, the, the, the story's going to say she tased the kid. She didn't tase him, but she did arc the taser, where you still get that snapping noise. It just doesn't come out. This is a troubled girl. No doubt she was troubled. She has on her cell phone, and they call the school resource officer. A cell phone violation is not a school resource officer. This is not his job. He shouldn't have done this. Not only does he do this, she won't listen to him, so he picks her up and dumps her on the head in the desk. Let's go back to the beginning. Maybe he shouldn't have been working in a school in the first place. Maybe this guy didn't have the temperament to do this. Yeah, this was a troubled kid. Troubled kids sometimes need a little bit more attention than everybody else. This is another right in the Carolinas. Slammed a girl 15. Florida school resource officer slams an unruly student to the ground. I'm not saying every now and then school resource officer isn't going to have to use force. It's going to happen sooner or later. Some of the incidents where they're using force it shouldn't have been done. Matter of fact, most of these, they shouldn't have even been, been involved with. As far as the guns, I, I got a big issue with, with everyone loading our schools up with guns. That report from Florida that wants to arm all the teachers now. Well, why? What are you going to get from that? And, and, and she was absolutely right. So now you call an active shooter or a lockdown, active threat. The cops get there. We walk in. There's a guy holding a gun. He's going to get shot. There's no question. I'm telling you now, if we're responding to that school because people are getting shot and we run into somebody with a gun, they're going to get shot. That's what we're trained to do. That's why the hallways need to be cleared out. That's why wearing your ID tags is so important. Always wear your ID tags. You would be shocked at how easy it is to identify who works there when we walk down a hallway into a classroom. Two good guys with guns. These are two cops on the same day fire their guns in a school. What are you doing? I had a gun 31 years and never accidentally went off. You have to touch it for it to go off. Minnesota third grader, this, this cop is sitting next to the kid on the bleachers in the gym. As he's talking to the kid, watching the gym class, the kid is able to sneak his finger into the holster and he pulls the trigger while it's in the holster. The teachers, the teacher actually fires a gun at school is at a safety class. Georgia teacher arrested after firing a gun at school and the teacher reserve councilman accidentally fires a gun at school. We're trying to keep guns out of school. And I can, there's a hundred more incidents where having guns in school is a bad idea to begin with. Retired police, military, that's fantastic, I can tell you. Uh, I, I know I'm probably not supposed to say this, but sometimes just because you're a retired cop or retired doesn't mean you're not out of your mind either. There needs to be a, <laughs> right? There needs to be a, a, an interview process. Just because you're retired doesn't mean that this is the environment for you to be working in. And I will tell you this. When you hire a retired cop, there may be a possibility, even against your policy, that he or she is bringing their gun in anyway and you don't know about it. I have holsters where I could hide my gun, you would never know I had it. That's a bad idea also. Can they balance the relationship? I'm a school resource, so every single principal has my phone number. Every assistant principal, board of education members. It's important that we talk all the time. We just had a girl try to commit suicide, we talk. What's going on? What's going on with the school? When the kids come to my house and they have a problem with bullying, I email the principal, hey, listen, Brianna was here. Everything's okay. She wants to talk to a guidance counselor tomorrow. She doesn't want me to know I talked to you. I just want you to know that this is what happened. It's not violating her trust. It's letting them know Brianna's having a really bad day and she needs to be kept an eye on tomorrow. This is your security guards again. This, is, this just happened. He held this kid up against the wall and put his gun at him. Are you kidding me? This, this should never happen. These stories shouldn't be going on. And this is my favorite, that the, uh, the security guard went to the bathroom, left his gun in there, and the, the elementary school kid walked in and found his gun. Uh, y y y you know, get into their training. School resource office is much more than just a cop with a gun in school. It's the programs they run, talking to the kids, being able to get them out of trouble when they're having a problem. When they first asked me to do this 12 years ago, my answer was, I'm not going into the schools and locking kids up. That's not what I want to do. And my boss was, I don't want you to do that. I want you to be able to help the kids and the families. That is what I can do. So when that mom just called me the other day because her son came home from college, and she, he goes back and she finds needles in his room, I had the, the references to give her, the referrals. It's not an arrest, it's a, it's a referral. We don't talk about this with anybody. This is me and you. We're going to get them help. It's going to be taken care of. 
Thank you for calling me. That's what this is all about. Do they know safety drill is very important? You, you know, you, you have people who come into your school every now and then going to tell you how to run your school, and then they're going to leave. Sit here for a safety drill. See what it's all about. Go through your lockdowns, and not just the ones that are easy. You know, 9.30 in the morning is an easy lockdown to do. 1 o'clock in the afternoon when you have band and specials, you have the cafeteria full, come in for that lockdown and just see the other chaos that is. What you're going to find sometimes is maybe that cafeteria, there is no way to secure it. Your next option may be to leave. There is no never and there is no always. Don't always say you have to stay here. Well, maybe not. If I can't secure my cafeteria and I have between two and 400 kids in here, maybe we got to go. But the next part of that is where are we going? Where, when we leave, what, where are we going to? The safety teams are important, the safety plans, the district, we sit on the district uh, safety committees, we sit on the building level safety committees. Some schools are very apt, uh, open for us, some aren't. Some they have their safety meetings without us being there. We're there if you need us. These are just some of the other. This is a bomb threat card. Anybody in your schools who answers a phone should have this sitting at their desk. Our bomb threats in, in the United States have gone up for like something like 1,400% in the last two years. These are, are where we change. This is where our tactics change. Columbine, we stayed out front, we waited, we'll never do that again. That's never going to happen again. Well, it did. In Parkland, that's exactly what happened. It shouldn't have happened, but it did. Matter of fact, they were told by their captain not to go into that building. That captain should be arrested. There were two emergency service cops who didn't listen to her and went in. They were both suspended, and their, their detail of emergency service was taken away from them. They lost their pay for 30 days, and their detail was taken away. They're back on patrol. Virginia Tech, we got a huge lesson from Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, Norris Hall, a six to eight classrooms. The shots rang out. This guy locked the door, the fire exit, for three days. No one did anything. There was a chain around it. But... As the shots rang out, two of those professors had military training. They knew right away it was gunshots, and they locked their classroom doors. Those were the only two classrooms where no one got hurt. Locking doors is extremely important. To date, we haven't had one classroom get breached after it was locked. Yes, we've had doors get shot through, but if you're not in front of the door, if you're not standing there to see what's going on, to date, not one locked classroom door has been breached. Very important that your locks work and they work properly. Uh, one of the drills we were doing, the teachers were honestly forgetting on whether they locked the doors or not. The school spent over $300,000, put all new interior doors in, and if it's green, it's unlocked. If it's red, it's locked, and you can see it. The other thing we did, every, every single door locks from the inside. You do not have to go out, turn the key, and then come back inside again. Sandy Hook, what did we learn from that? We learned that even when your school does everything right, even when your school follows all the rules, we can still have a tragedy. This was a thought out, well-planned attack. He went through a lobby that had a huge glass window. He blew out the glass window and he was in that school in no time flat. And Parkland, what did we learn? We, we, we learned that, you, you know what? From 1999, these mistakes we made now should have never happened again. That cop sitting out front, you should have went in. You're the school resource guy, you should have went in. He said yesterday he had no duty to go in. Yes, you did. You had a duty when you took that job. To the captain who told the other cops not to go in. I and mean, right now they're getting blasted on everything, but this shouldn't have happened to begin with. And if we break down that, that parkland from the beginning to the end, the school itself, having people on campus who don't belong there, why was he there in the first place? He was there 30 days before that. What was he doing? He was testing the systems. He was seeing how far he could get into your building. He was checking to see what doors would be unlocked. No door should ever be unlocked. These are all rapid deployment. That's how we respond. That's going to be our response to this. Anyone who's been through a police active shooter uh, response, it, 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 it's tough to see. There's, there's a lot of guns coming, a lot of big guns coming. We're coming fast, we're coming in, we're coming quick. Active shooter, listen, they're there to cause damage. This is not somebody you're going to negotiate with. Uh, you know, I was at a conference in Atlanta, and I talked to a principal from Ohio where his assistant principal confronted the shooter in the hallway because he knew this kid. And that kid shot him right in the chest and dropped him right there. These are not people you're going to negotiate. When this plan gets put into effect, they're either going to kill themselves or the police are going to kill them. Then they're not going to stop once they start. These are all your parents... The safety plans, shelter in place, extremely important, weather related, not weather related, stay away from the glass and windows, the hurricanes, hold in place, we got something going on in the hallway, normally a fight, we're going to hold in place, get that over with, then we'll release again. Evacuation, 
When are we going to evacuate? Well, when something's going on in our building, we're going to get out. There's a second part to evacuation. We have a secondary location if we need it. Does everyone know where it is? And more important, do we know how we're going to move all these kids there? Uh, just so you know, NICE, the bus company, call them. They will, get their they will kick people off their buses and get them to your school. If you have an emergency and need buses, they will get buses to your school. Do they know the secondary location? Most kids don't. Most parents don't. A lot of teachers don't. And when you have that secondary location picked out, uh, for Mineola, anybody here from Mineola? It's, it's uh, uh, LA Fitness across the street. But make sure they know you're coming. It's a rude awakening when 400 students walk through your front door. <laughs> Reverse evacuation, we know we can get out. How fast can we get back in? When something happens outside, can we get these kids back in as fast as we can get out? This is in Las Vegas. We have th this princess shows up at school to the playground with an ax. This isn't going to be the only playground we're going to talk about. She shows with an ax and she tells those teachers she's going to kill every kid. On this is an elementary school. They did a reverse evacuation. They got them all back in and they locked down. Good move. You do have someone on your campus threatening to kill your kids. That's a lockdown. That's not a lockout. That's a lockdown. A lockout, exteriors, no one, a lockout, we're going to have our day going as normal, we're going to lock out doors, but your school should all be in a state of lockout anyway. The only difference here is there's going to be nobody in or out while we're in this. It doesn't mean that you can't adapt this. I have a guy with a rifle in front of my school and he's just walking past, he's not pointing at the school. That's a lockout, and every single classroom that can see him needs to move until we find out what he's doing there. And for our park case, it wasn't a rifle, it was a golf club the guy had in his bag. But good, call us. Let us find out what it is. I'd rather you call us and say, oh, you know what, it's just a golf club, than not call us and say, you know, I should have called 10 minutes ago. A lockdown, South Carolina. South Carolina, that, that, that church shooting, what people don't realize was that young man went into that church and slaughtered those people. That was not his first target. His first target was a community college that was about a mile away. He visited three times. All three times he got challenged. What are you doing here? He couldn't get into buildings because they were locked. And in what he'll tell you flat out, I could have killed a people, a few people. I wasn't going to get that target rich environment I was looking for. Pulse nightclub, that was not his first target. His first target was downtown Disney and Universal City Walk. And he'll tell you flat out, there was just too many off-duty cops and security. I would have killed a few people, but I wouldn't have got that target-rich environment I'm looking for. Locking your buildings work. Identifying people work. It keeps them from coming in. We're going to, uh, Virginia Tech, again, with the classrooms, very important. Our classrooms get locked. Once you're in a lockdown, you are never going back to that door again. Once you sweep your hallway, if possible, if the event's in front of your classroom, you're not going to sweep the hallway. You're going to lock your door. You're going to hide. The next people coming into your building are going to the police and or school administrator, depending on what your policy is. Anyone know what your policies are? Or who's going to let you out? Uh, yeah. The, the problem for the police is most of us, we can get in your building. We don't have interior keys once it's over to get into your door. So that's another problem we have to work on. Um, the fire alarm. Fire alarm gets pulled. It's easy. You're, you're in a lockdown. Fire alarm gets pulled. You don't see smoke. You don't, you don't smell smoke. You don't see fire. You're staying put. In Parkland, what happened, and we're going to get into some of the news stories. This teacher was labeled a coward, and the teacher wasn't a coward. The teacher did the right thing. Santa Fe, this guy, he's really quiet, and he wore a trench coat every day. You're in Santa Fe, Texas. Why are you wearing a trench coat? Nobody bothered to see why this kid was wearing it. I know why he was wearing it. Because if I wear it every single day and you test me, eventually you're going to stop because I wear it every single day, and I'll be able to get in any gun I want into this school. And he did. He had a shotgun and a revolver, and USA Today did a nice article on him saying that he was the kind shooter because he didn't use an AR-15. What a stupid article. How do, you, how do you write an article like this? Somebody who slaughtered kids in a school. He also had explosive devices. That goes back to Columbine. They planted explosive devices. Columbine was a military exercise. It wasn't a school shooting. They thought out everything. From, from, they pulled the fire alarm a couple days before to see where the police and fire trucks were going to line up, and then they put propane tanks with bombs next to that so they could blow them up when they got there. All their time has failed that they got online. Every single one failed. We had a woman, she called the police three times over 30 terrifying minutes. Well, where are 30 minutes? They're not there yet? Your police have to do a better job of getting to your schools. You, we will be at our schools in a minute, under a minute, once we get notified. But it also means that we're hanging out at our schools when we got downtime. 
You want to drink that cup of coffee? Do it in front of the school. You want to read your paper? Do it in the school parking lot. Be visible. Be out there. And again, when he heard the shots, he thought it was nothing, and the fire alarm once again gets pulled. This is becoming more of a more tactic. Why? Because the lockdowns are getting better. We're taking away their target-rich environment right away. So what do they do? They pull the fire alarm and it drives that traffic right back into the hallway. Parkland was the reverse of that. Parkland, most of them didn't know they were in lockdown yet, and the fire alarm went off, which is why they were all in the hallway. What mistake did they make? Once they realized they were in lockdown, where'd they try to get to? Back to their classroom. That's not where you go. You go to your nearest classroom. You don't go back to your classroom. You go to the classroom that's nearest you. The teachers there should have swept the hallway. They didn't, or those kids would have been in. Fall Park Memorial, we put up a big new addition, and there is a long gap between classrooms, something we didn't realize until we did a lockdown drill. And I'm standing there, and 11th graders looking at me. Doors get swept, they get locked, he's looking at me. What do I do? So what do you think you do? Are you safe in this hallway right now? He said, no. I said, anything around? There's a bathroom? I said, are you safer in that bathroom than you are right here? Yes. Then you go in the bathroom, you turn your phone off, and you put your feet up on the toilet, and you wait. My father told me if I go in the bathroom, they're going to shoot me. They're looking for a target-rich environment. They're not looking for one person. Is that possibility there? Any possibility is. Do you have anything else? Look around. Well, there's an exit. So go. You're better off outside than you are here. Anything to get out of this hallway. So part of our kids are very smart. Give them the right tools. Let them start thinking. Our elementary schools, they could run a lockdown on their own now. They don't even need the teachers anymore. But we do it 10 times a year in both schools. We do it during lunch. We were there one day for a meeting. There was a play practice going on with the third graders. And the principal said, let's do it now. Let's see what this teacher does with these 60 third graders. She was fantastic, man. She took them all behind the curtain of the stage. She got them all behind there. Is it ideal? No. Did she hide them? Yes. Parkland, student not permitted on property. This is a visitor management system. You, your raptor, your lobby guard, whatever you're using in your school would have prevented this. But he got in. Nicholas Cruz gets in. Not only did he get in, he got in twice. He got in 30 days before and he gets in this day. Security should have been out there. Our security guards are outside monitoring who's coming in. This is why that one entrance in, one entrance out. You, get, you monitor who's coming into your building. Nicholas Cruz was not supposed to be in the school this day. He's not allowed on school property, yet, yet he got in. The door, he knew that building was going to be unlocked. That door was always unlocked. Extremely important to keep our exterior doors locked all the time. Fire alarm pulled, no smoke, and then they called the code, code reds. We do not do codes. All of us have took incident command. All of us. Did everyone here take that from the federal government? Part of that was there's no more code. It's all plain. You're in language, tell people. You're in lockdown, tell people you're in lockdown. You're in lockout, tell people. Our kids can handle it. This whole code thing, the only one who didn't know the codes were the substitutes and the secondary staff. The, te the kids all knew what the codes were, but the, the assistant principal who came in for the day, the, that intern principal didn't know what the codes were. No more codes. You're in lockdown three times. Lockdown, 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 and that's it. Then you go tuck yourself in. <clears throat> this is the, the article that comes out that this, this student reported this teacher as being a coward and opportunist, and the student couldn't have been more wrong. I get it's a very emotional time. I understand that he was hurt. He wasn't allowed back in that door. The teacher did the right thing. They're in the hallway. Lockdown gets called. They thought it was a fire drill. He goes back in. He did grab the kids nearest to the door. That is his job. And then he locked down. Yep, they came to his door. He didn't open it. That is his job. You don't open that door again. You do not open that door again. He's not, he's not a coward. He's a hero. That's a horrible decision to put any human being in. What, what, a, what a difficult decision to make. He did exactly what he was trained to do. Once it's closed, you shelter it again. Once you're in that room, you stay in that room. You don't go anywhere. We don't unlock it. It will be unlocked from somebody from the outside in, but that's about to change now, too. You know, this is uh, an interview with... <laughs> They thought it was a drill. Why would you think it was a drill? Why is it always assumed it's a drill? Let's assume it's real, and then we'll take the drill part after that, because there's no email sent, because the, the, the teacher didn't have the time. I, I believe you practice, you know, the way you practice is the way you play. We now put the blue lights in Flower Park Memorial. Well, we're not allowed to hit it during the drill. Why not? Who's going to hit it when it happens? If you don't do it now, you're never going to do it. No one's going to do it. It's, it becomes muscle memory. You're going to panic. Your brain's going to do what it told what it remembers to do. Posed a student months before. Cruz set in motion a plan, again, that pre-planning. He got into a locker with a Sneeds. The Sneeds was his adoptive family. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you, you know, I, I know she said he bought that rifle. He didn't. His, his adoptive parents had that rifle locked up. He just knew how to go get it. And he packs it into a case. He called it, and then he puts on an ROTC shirt that he knew was meeting that day. That's how he got into the building. That's why no one questioned him. He knew that the ROTC club met that afternoon. He had the shirt, he put it on, and he walks past everybody. And he entered just before dismissal. Dismissal and arrival are the most dangerous times we have in our schools. Broward, this is all the, 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 the Parkland, what happens after this, they suspend the second deputy, the captain in charge, that captain should be arrested, shouldn't just be ineffective. This is a person who told people not to go in. Of course we're going in. 911, this problem you're going to have in any school district that spans over more than one cell tower. In Floral Park, we hit Nassau County, we hit New York City, and we hit our own 911 system. You never know where that phone call is going to go when you hit 911. You never know what tower is going to pick it up. This is going to be a problem. The problem here is Carl Springs dispatcher picks up the first few phone calls, never transfers it to Broward County. Why not? You have kids telling you there's someone shooting up your school. You have kids that are terrified, and they didn't transfer the calls. This is, you talk about, this is a 14-year-old young man, right? He didn't go to the middle school. This is a kid who's, who's intent on shooting up a school. But he didn't go to middle school because there were tons of cops there. That's that planning event. I'm going to start this going, right? He, he told everybody that he's going to target the school because it, it it wouldn't have a police officer, and he was going to kill about 150 people. He actually put in his diary he wants to beat Adam Lanza. That was his goal. He said he was killed his father first, and this is exactly, he said, my plan is shooting my dad and getting the keys into the truck. Talk about a pre-planning. Talk about an event where you're going to start from the beginning to the end and follow this through. He's going to drive to the elementary school that he knew was exactly four minutes away. He's going to shoot out the bottom glass of the building. He knew there was bottom glass, and he knew to shoot it out. He's going to enter the building, and he's going to go into the second grade class because it's right there. He's going to shoot the second grade teacher, and then he's going to get a keys so he doesn't have to have to fill with the rest of the doors. He gets to the school. He did do all this. He did shoot his dad. He did steal the car. He got to the playground. The kids were outside. He did kill one little boy. His gun jammed, and that saved the rest of this from happening. This is your school student threat assessment. I'm not going to go into threat assessments. It would, take, it would take a year and a day. But this is the Virginia model. If you ever want a place to start, if you're getting your threat assessment team started, I don't know, is anyone here sit on a threat assessment team? Is anybody, you do some? You sit on one also? And there should be about four or five people on that team when the threats come in. This is a good place to start if you're going to start a threat assessment team up and running. What it is, who should be on it, this is their, their suggestion. That this could be changed at any time. It doesn't have to be these people. School counselor, suicide psychologist, social worker, school resource officer, maybe. Let's see what's going on with the threats before we get the cops involved right away. Let, let's see if we're going to handle this on a school level. If, if, it's, if it's counseling, let's see if it's one of these transitive or, or a substantial threat where we're going with this before we start activating outside resources to come in. To inform the school resource officer wouldn't be a bad idea if you have that kind of relationship. All threats should be taken serious. That, that's kind of obvious. We all know that. Uh, all going to be investigated. That means even by you. Just a couple of questions. You know, maybe somebody's just having a bad day. Maybe there's a kid you know isn't going to do anything. Maybe it's a threat. Or maybe it's a threat where you're not sure. Then, then we're going to start going deeper into this and getting your other systems in, your other stakeholders uh, the roles defined, educator, law enforcement, and training. You know, how, how often do the, does the staff get trained on your school on how to handle threats, on lockdowns, lockouts? How many do you do a year? How many do you notify about in advance before they come through? Educating the community about the threat assessment itself because they could be a, a key player in the threat assessment. Sometimes these are going to come in from a neighbor. Sometimes these are going to come in from a bus driver. When to activate? Well, there's a bunch of examples where they, they have a kid who makes a drawing, kids make a video. It's going to be investigated by your threat assessment team and then decide from there what's going to happen. These are your second parties where it's going to come through. Where your threat assessment team is going to be activated. The letters to call a tip. If you have, anybody have a tip line in their school? You do? What school are you with?
you, you know, we were looking into them. The problem we had is who's going to take responsibility for this on the 4th of July at 10 o'clock at night. Have you guys worked that out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we didn't have anybody willing to step up because my, my fear was, uh, you know, they all look at me. You, no, not me. What if I'm away? What if my phone's not working? I don't want to be the one that has to live with the fact I missed this. You have a backup? Is it just you? It should be a couple people. All right. Oh, they have their own. Okay. Right. Will it go to all four of you at the same time? Blue lights, everyone have them on your schools? Anyone know what they are? Susan, you know what they are? You know, it's funny. I was just at a, a school with the blue lights out there. I said, oh, the blue lights. Are. Just so you know, a blue light means we have something going on in this building that's really bad. Stay away. We don't want you here. You get that bus coming, that bus coming back from BOCES. That blue light is on. Get out of here. You got mom bringing little Johnny back from school from the dentist appointment. That blue light's on. Get out of here. You got your teens going out for lunch. Open camp. I love open campuses. You come back. The light's on. Get out of here. My question is, where do you go? You all should have secondary locations picked out. You're still responsible for these kids, that busload of kids. You should know where they're going. Should be another school in your district if possible. If not, if it's another school, sometimes a school in another district could be closer than one of your own schools. Just get a memorandum of understanding so they know what to do with these kids when they're compiling in now. What's a green light mean? We're having, you know, we haven't even got the blue light settled, and now we're going to come out with green lights. To me, I'd rather train people on the blue. I love the blue light idea. It's, it's fantastic. It works. It's easy to use. Then we came out with green lights. Here's what a green light means. You go into a lockdown. You're in your cafeteria. My cafeteria, I can't lock down. Where am I going? Outside. Well, wait a second. We don't want you outside, but you wouldn't know because the blue light got activated. So now they're going to put in green lights to tell you that it's a lockout. Stay put. Uh, you're in the cafeteria. Something going on. The guy with, with the, the bag walks past your school. And now you go into a lockout. Okay? Lockout, your blue lights get activated. Well, if you're in a cafeteria that can't be locked out, your policy may be to leave. I don't want you to leave. We're in a lockout. So the green lights are now saying, well, wait a second. We're in a lockout. Stay put. This would be for your, your, your auditoriums, your cafeterias, your gymnasiums. But I would get the blue lights working first before we go to the green. Uh, the Rave app, you guys have this in your schools? Who's been trained in it? You've been trained on it? You guys, you guys have it? How many administrators have access to it? Four. Four. So you got the Rave app from NASA. Okay. Everyone familiar with what the Rave app is, right? We're going to get this app on our phone. It's going to be fan. What it is is an app. The Nassau County Police gave out. You're going to uh, administrate it. There's going to be somebody from your school that oversees it. Usually it's the superintendent. Each building is going to have a code where they can now allow other people in. So in a high school, it's me plus four other people have access to this. Should a shooter active threat happen, you're going to open this app, you're going to hit it, and our hand's going to swing around five seconds, it's going to activate. And then it's going to ask you, do you want us to call 911? The answer is always yes. Even if you hit it on an accident, yes, I want you to call 911. What's the problems with it? Schools are using this, is I'm safe now. I hit that app, man, we, we're good to go. Apps fail. Also, one of our schools, 60% of the school doesn't get uh, a connection on their phone. 60%. Our security office can't get a signal out. Well, Rave app is no good if I can't get my signal out. A Rave is good for a backup. Make sure people have responsibility. Who's physically calling 911 in that office? Who's hitting the, the blue light button? Who's hitting at the panic button? If you have one, panic buttons are a real bad idea, just so you know. But if you have one, there should be tasks assigned so everyone, so no one ever thinks, why? Well, I know you hit the Rave app, so I don't have to hit it. And I know you call 911, so I don't. And then all of a sudden, no phone calls come in. You know, in your school, so you, you deal, everybody here in Nassau County? Anybody, you're private? Anybody else private? Does school, do the police have a way to get into your building? You're in a lockout, a lockdown. No one's, no one's coming to the door when they get there. How are they getting into your building? Well, one of the schools I was just in in Belmore, they put a knock box outside, a code to get the key, and off they go into the building. It's a great idea. You have access to the building. Uh, the, the swipe keys, we, we have them to all schools. We made mistakes. We did a lockdown 10.30 in the morning, and in walks a teacher. We're in lockdown. How'd you get into the building? Her card still worked. So now when we're in lockdown, all the cards turn off because I don't want anyone coming into the building, and... 
the police and administrators' cards stay active. Other than your phones, is there any other way from your police department? Do you have the phone number of your pop officer? Do you have the phone number? If the phone lines go down, and if we get something in Nassau County, they are going to be overwhelmed. The amount of phone calls they're going to get, and they're also dispatching the police cars. They're also torching to the other agencies, Floral Park, Glen Cove, Limbrook, Rockville Center. They are going to be completely overwhelmed. Do you have somebody that you can get in touch with? Hey, listen, man, we're locked in the gymnasium. 911's down. No problem. We got you. Uh, it, it says if you have cameras, can the police get in? If you have the Rave app, part of that is you have to agree to let them into your camera system. It's a great idea. They also, just so you know, when you activate that, on the 911 screen is your building's going to come up with the, the, the floor plans. If, if you gave them to them, the cameras are going to turn on. The dispatch is going to know what phone activated it and where that phone is right now. Your, your, your process, identification, who are you? What are you doing here? The double doors, locking those doors. A visitor management system's fantastic. Raptor, I love Raptor. Raptor does a whole host of things that no one even knows it does. The Raptor system itself, everyone know what I'm talking about with Raptor? Can notify, Raptor is a visitor manager. You give them your license, they run your license. You come back as a registered sex offender, it's gonna come up and tell you, but it will all, what's that? But out of all of them, I think Raptor's one of the cheapest. But it also will, in, in the district, it will, what do you have? Yeah, they're, they're all good. I, it can notify me and Matt right away. So we get somebody on campus who doesn't belong there. Besides giving a hit to the school, if the school gives them my email or my text message, it will text me, hey, Nicholas Cruz just checked into the front doors. Of, so even if I'm off, I can get in touch with the desk. Or he's working. Matt, Nicholas Cruz just checked into the school. He doesn't belong there. But it also works for custody disputes. It works for order protections. Your substitutes, secondary staff, are they trained in this also? Are your bus drivers trained in what a lockdown is? Just because they're not in the building all the time doesn't mean they're not going to be in the building. They should know what's going on. Your secretary should know what's going on. Well, you, well, it's not a bad idea to run this past them because they may be inside in the bathroom. They, they may have a busload of kids with that blue lights on. Now where are they going? They need to be involved in this plans too. And I will tell you, we need to get the kids involved on our safety plans and safety committees because they know so much more than we, they're in these buildings all the time. They'll get the stuff we're missing. Am I running out of time, Wendy? Yeah, um, what time are we ending? All right. Uh, again, make sure the police can get in. A lot of schools I talk to, the police have no way to get in. The answer is, well, we'll get in. That's not an answer. Telling me you're going to get in is not an answer, considering most of us have spent substantial amount of money hardening our exterior doors over the last five years. You may have been able to get in five years ago. You're probably not going to get in now. I was just, I was at a school and they're telling me, uh, I won't tell you the district. They put in these bulletproof doors. Bulletproof doors are extremely heavy, brutally heavy and, and bullet resistant. Nothing's bulletproof. But as soon as you open a bullet resistant door, you'll know it because it's, it's, it's about 50 times heavier than a regular door. So the guys, the principal's boasting on how they put this door in. It's going to keep people out. And all I do is look to the right it's a circular driveway, and to the right is their cafeteria, and every single cafeteria door was propped open. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your visitor actions, your visitor control, building perimeters, active threat for all your drills. The drills are brutally important, and to take them serious. Uh, the one thing I got from the DA's ambassador program with the kids was the drills are not being taken serious by staff at all. And I, I agree with them. We've been in schools where some classrooms take it extremely serious and others go on with their regular school day. Lockdowns work. Lockdowns work. They keep people safe until we get there. The police have to do a better job of getting there quicker. That's what we need to work on next. Um, your reunification re plans are brutally important. There is going to be an end to this. Now, once it's over, where are all these parents going? How are we getting everybody back? And how are we notifying the people who, who lost people? Are you going to separate them? Are you going to keep them together? It's part of your safety. You guys go through this, Susan, with the reunification at all? Uh, yeah, it, it's important. And I, I went to a I actually went to an hour class on reunification, and the guy was really good on, on how gentle you have to be, making the plans. You, you're going to get a lot of people coming to your school. And in Nassau County, that's going to be one of our hardest things to combat in the beginning is this rash of parents coming to the school, and some of them are off-duty cops. Some of them are Secret Service agents. Some of them are, and they're all going to bring their guns with them. That's the last thing we need is more guns here. 
Students' responsibility, most important for the students, man, you see a threat, you have to tell somebody. You're going to see this threat before we are. You're much better on social media than we are, and almost all of these people have tipped their hand on social media one way or another. The doctor who shopped that hospital, he basically gave his whole plan right on social media. He told people what he was gonna do. It was a year before that, but he flat out told everybody. There's a company called Awarity, I was talking to the owner there, where he will start tracking social media threats for your school district. The problem with these social media companies, they're only tracking the public part. Most of our kids' accounts are private. Doesn't mean that they're private from everybody. It will keep these prying companies out of their life, which doesn't help us pick up on much. Uh, there's a company called Social Sentinel that uh, Sandy Hook was using, Newton was using, and they just got rid of it because it, they found it to be no benefit at all. Well, it's no benefit because all their, their accounts are on private, and it's only picking up the, the public social media threats that are being made. But our kids are gonna see this. In our school, we, we had a, a father came to work with a picture of a 16-year-old girl holding a gun. She didn't go to our schools, but she lived in, our, in, our, in Fall Park. Uh, that morning I came to work, they gave it to me. I went to the principal, I said, hey, did you see? He goes, that, she goes, is that the Snapchat? I said, yep, five kids were already in here and reported it, fantastic. Except it should have been, 100 kids should have been in there and reported. It shouldn't have been just five. The days of thinking that this isn't gonna happen here or it's a joke are over. Let somebody know what you saw. Trapped in the hallway, we talked about that pet exit. Being prepared, the anonymous reporting systems, uh, open lines of communication between the students, you and us, is extremely important. How are we going to talk to one another when all this is going on? You, you guys, the teachers in school, you all are on an app that can talk to each other, like group me now, or is that not happening yet? That's not a bad idea to get a school-based group chat going so we could find out what's going on one end of the building to the other. There is chaos when this is going on. That could settle down some of the chaos. The training for your staff, pendant alarm systems. I don't know if anyone has ever seen them. It's alarm systems that the, the designees will wear around their necks. They're going to hit this pendant. We have them in both elementary schools. My problem with it, it notifies an alarm company who in turn notifies us. That's a lot of time in between when something's actually going on. Uh, last time we tested it, what was it, Matt? 37 seconds and 17 seconds. And it doesn't sound like a lot of time until somebody's in your building trying to hurt, hurt your kids. That's an awful lot of time. That's when we get notified and then we get to your school. I would rather have this pendant come right to the police department so we know what's going on, but that hasn't been able to happen yet. No, there's only three to each building. And, and it has its limitations too. It doesn't work anywhere. They told us 100 yards with the older schools, with, with the way they're built, no way. No way we'll reach 100 yards to get to the main. We're finding probably 30 to 40 yards once you're outside of that range, but the security desk, it will reach. And that's the people we want to have it because the app isn't gonna work at her phone. <clears throat> your, your safety committees, when you sit on these teams and you listen, let's make sure we're addressing the problems at hand. A lot of these safety meetings, sometimes things get blown off. Uh, they're too expensive, we don't have the manpower, we don't have the reason. Well, let's find a way. Let's get some of these grant monies out there. I think the state and federal government at some point have to kick in. You want to keep telling us you need to do stuff? Well, give us some money to harden our schools a little bit. It's time to start releasing some money so we can get these schools up to par to keep them safe. To just hope it's not going to happen here isn't enough. Being prepared and your safety committees are the first step in making sure we got all these bases covered. Uh, the safety meeting, I like when it meets right before school to make sure we refresh everything we talked about before school ended, and any new, new issues that come up. On all our campuses, it's not just the active shooter, active threat, it, it's the kids going to the school buses and the cars in front of our campuses, because the truth of the matter is, they are killed six times more than in any active shooter event in any school. Is getting hit by a school bus or a parent dropping off a school or at a, at a, at a bus stop. The school should be kept in a state of lockout all the time. No doors should be open. No doors should be propped open. There are now alarms that will notify security if one of the doors is left open for too long. Great idea. Buzzer systems in and out. Um, I was just at a school at Wendy where they, they identified me outside the school before I got in. That's fantastic. Who are you? What are you doing? Why are you at my school? And I had to show my license and scan it outside the building before I got entrance into the building. That's a great way of keeping people out of your building you don't want near your building. Well, that's a jail. That's not a jail. That's nowhere near a jail. That's keeping people out of my building I don't want there. Your large-scale events are always going to be hard to control. There's no visitor management system I know of that's going to be able to control a, a uh, grandparents' day, a, a, a holiday concert that we have going on now. Extremely hard to protect against. Not impossible. Be out there. Staff should be scanning people as they're coming in. Does everyone look like they belong here? Does everyone have a kid with them? Does everybody dropping off a kid? 
If you don't think someone belongs there, challenge them. Hey, how you doing? I'm John Groshans of Fall Park. Who's your son? You here for your grandson? Who are you here for? If the answer is get out of my face, it's time to call 911. Hey, listen, I got somebody here who probably doesn't belong here. I got an auditorium full of people. Your emergency plans, training, drills, we're going to go through the training and drills, emergency plans over and over again. Extremely important. Everyone knows what your emergency plans are. Most of the time, we look at them after an event, and then they get put away again. No one even peeks at them again. Um, you'll, you'll find them hanging behind doors in classrooms every now and then. Let's find out what we're supposed to do. As far as your fire drills, we're, we're pretty much down pat with that. You want to do a fire drill with your safety committee? Block an exit. See what happens. Get them out of the, 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 the tone of we always go out this doorway. What happens when this doorway is closed? Now where do we go? We should be doing that. We should be always thinking. You, you got a, you, a fire extinguisher laying in a hallway that's never there before. Don't touch it. Get somebody. First of all, good time to, to use a blocked evacuation. We're not going to go out that way. Let's get somebody in here to find it out. Who's going to know right away where that, that fire extinguisher belongs there? Your, your security guards or your custodians? They'll know right away whether it belongs there or not. Your, your doors should all be marked and numbered. Your exterior doors from one going around, one, two, three, four, five, six, extremely important for us. We're going to be getting a lot of agencies working together. When we get to your school, we don't always know north, south, east, and west. But I know I'm going in doorway number one. It's very important for the dispatcher to track where we're going into your building so we don't shoot each other as we're going through. I'm going in building one. Be, be careful. Team one went in entrance two already. Your outside room numbers, should also, your room numbers from the outside should also be visible for us to see. So we know from the outside when that rave app gets activated, your room 222 is right there. I know exactly where it is. Your, your target rich environments. And these are the hardest to protect in any school. Something to be aware of, your cafeterias, your auditoriums, and your gymnasiums. Those plans need to be pretty specific on what we're going to do with these kids. Usually you have multiple kids in there with multiple aides, multiple teachers. A lot of times your locker rooms aren't going to be able to handle that flush of people. If you're not sure, try it one day. See if they fit. If they don't, where are we going from here? I know in your cafeteria you're not all staying here. We've got to go somewhere. So we're going outside, let's actually do it, maybe as a group for the safety committee first, or a tabletop, and find out when I'm outside, where am I going to next? What's my next point, course of action from here? E plan. So anybody in a wheelchair, students, and you know, you may have a student off the break, comes back in a wheelchair all of a sudden. Whose responsibility is The teacher has a lot going on to tell them to be responsible for this kid also. The teacher has between 20 and 40 kids to begin with. And now you're going to add a wheelchair? Nope, it's got to be somebody else. We need an aide, a nurse, a nurse's aide. Somebody needs to say, I'll make sure this person gets out of my building. Does anybody have any questions for me? Oh, it's all over. We, we need to take care of the problem at hand first. That's going to be solved first. Then we're going to do all the other stuff after. You know, when, when Matt hears me speak to, to educators, and I'm worried about the first two minutes and 30 seconds. After that, that's, not, that, that's the sergeants, that's the captains, the lieutenants, that's your superintendents. I, I'm out of it. My, my job is to protect those kids for two minutes and 27 seconds. And after that, then it's somebody else's problem. I want to make sure we're doing everything right for those two minutes. We don't get a whole lot of time to react to this. And when it's a high school and it's coming from in, inside, it's even harder to protect against. It's not impossible, it's just harder. As far as your, I don't know why they... If I was a school guy that day, I'd want them in your building. I don't understand why they kept them outside. I don't, I don't, you know, but even in our world, we're not in charge of the schools. We make suggestions. The superintendent is the one who makes the final call. We, you know, we, we, we had a person get shot not too far from one of our elementary schools. And the parent, what happened was it was at dismissal. We didn't let the kids out. We're in a lockout. No one's coming in or out. And of course, you can imagine how happy the parents were that now, they, at 4 o'clock, they actually released the buses and aren't going to hold them anymore. So now we have to get them all picked up, but we wouldn't let the parents inside. So the superintendent said, I don't understand why they're out here. I said, because I don't know where the guy with the gun went. He could be standing here. Nope, open the doors and let him in. It's your building. Once you make that decision, you're the superintendent, open them up and let them in. And the school nurse is the one who really, really was angry that she let the people in. I know we're going to break for lunch. If anyone has to go, please. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. I hope you got something out of this. If anyone has any other questions, I'm here.